Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, there's a good one. Thanks for uh, being here. And we have guests with us today. Kind of a special day. Service will hold some things, and uh, I'm just excited to be here with you because we want to praise the Lord Jesus Christ together. We're going to start a new series, and so we're moving into the book of Acts. And uh, just to let you know that last night I tried to live into Acts chapter 20. So the story is told of Paul preaching till midnight, and somebody who was in the windowsill fell asleep and fell out, and um, well, his name was Eutychus. So last night I preached till about 11.15 in here, and there were flies dropping everywhere. (laughs) We got them out, and so this morning we should be good to go. I promise not to go to midnight. In fact, last week I even got secret messages from people to say I had to stop by noon because of some football game, but we're not going to go there, so... Thanks again for being here. If you're a guest with us, either online, thanks for watching on Facebook Live. We'll post to YouTube afterwards as well. But uh, if you would, be gracious uh, as a guest. Take out a Pew Connection card. Let us know that you're here. If you uh, need anything from us, uh, prayer, request, uh, Bible, any resources, we'd love to do that together. So it's good to be together with God's people and uh, we're rejoicing. Recognizing that some folks with the new year and some folks were under influenza and all that kind of stuff, we thought we better do just a really quick check on what happened this last week. So just in case you missed it, we did eat very well last week and we even delivered some take-home dinners, which was a wonderful thing. But uh, I'm a little concerned. Uh, Again, you know, we've got uh, our clerk there to your far left, Dave, no problem. Leon, no problem. And then there's the problem. So... (laughs) Um, If you're a guest with us, we have this ongoing thing about uh, if I show a picture of, say, a football player, the next thing you know, that team loses, and that team loses, that team loses. The streak is now broken because Jamie came up and talked about the Jackrabbits, and they won. So I just don't know what to do about that, but yeah. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, we had a good Sunday last week, so that was there. Thanks for approving the budget, both the general fund or approving, affirming it, uh, as it's something that we live into over the course of this year. And uh, there are multiple ways you can continue to come alongside us as we do ministry together. And we just appreciate all the ways that you do give. But our, both the general fund and mission fund are moving forward for the 2023 year. So that's a good thing. The, uh, the big tree here is gone, plus all of the other trees, as you see, and I just have a special thank you to all of the folks that helped, and uh, some of you came as couples. It was interesting. Uh, I'll be offering some marriage counseling afterwards, but uh, to see how to take this tree down. Do you take it down in four parts or five parts? And when one says the other, uh, we had a little heated, uh, good di- discussion, we'll call it, so that was there. Youth group, we started up this past uh, Wednesday again, and so if you have kids and or grandchildren for junior high, senior high on Wednesday nights, we offer that here. You can talk to Amy Abbas. And uh, I started a new class on Wednesday evening called Purposeful Living. <laughs> uh, we have a problem. <laughs> oh. I'm supposed to give you this. You're supposed to give me this. <laughs> Fruitcake. <laughs> oh, okay. I, here I thought maybe it was something for somebody. Oh, it's frozen. Oh, 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 oh yes, yes, yes. Mmm, <laughs> One frozen beef tongue. Oh, 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 oh. Can, uh, can you run home really quickly? Put it in the crock pot for two hours. And <laughs> oh, my. Who wants to come for dinner? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheryl (laughs) McNally. Write down all those names. There were five people coming, so. (laughs) Oh, it is fun. If anything, as a congregation, we love Jesus, but we really love each other. And if you don't have a home church, I'm just saying, come and have some fun with us. So it's going to be a good thing together. Our uh, two women's groups met, and normally they'll meet the first Thursday of the month, but because of snow and all that stuff, but I'm proud of them. And what else happened this last week? Can you imagine? A dozen eggs, $5.47. Go to McDonald's now for an egg McNuffin and it's 10 bucks. I love it. Anyway, boom. 
We had a birthday, and we don't pick on people all the time, but when they have important birthdays, like 75, I wanted to make sure Charlene, I think, was gone for the weekend, right? Yes, good, making sure. But anyway, uh, we celebrated with her, and that was a good thing. Today, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, apparently, uh, Pastors with Sneakers is the halftime show. <laughs> So I have no idea what's up, but uh, many of you have signed up for tickets. We're going to sit together in section 108 or whatever it might be, and uh, I'll be at the door, and if you don't have a ticket, we'll get you in anyway. So, But all of that to say, uh, this afternoon at the Sanford Pentagon, I don't think they're televising this, so I just thought I'd let you know. Anyway, boom. Oh. Oh, yeah, Sure. <laughs> Some old man, we got to celebrate, isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this will be our note, Merlin is his name, hmm. happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Merlin, happy birthday to you, and 80 more, yeah. <laughs> oh. I think this was for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I do know that your family went together. They all chipped in about a nickel each by the looks of this thing here. But uh, uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is a gift. A lot of places you go, like to Hawaii or wherever it might be, and you get a T-shirt that says, all I got for going to Hawaii was a T-shirt. Looks like all you got is a hat. <laughs> 80, never looks so good. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Merlin working, Merlin laughing, Merlin supervising. That's how it goes. So those are good, good pictures. Tomorrow, a uh, 94-year-old lady, so Loretta Wildryer, and uh, make sure you say a prayer for her as well and give God thanks. And so that's a big birthday tomorrow for her. Moving closer to George. And so, yeah, we just love it. What an intergenerational church. And it's good to be together with God's people. All right, I'm going to ask somebody else with a birthday today. Who else's birthday? Merlin, you don't have to come up, but that would be A.P. Come on up. There he is. Ooh. Didn't think we realized that, did you? Uh -huh. You're looking pretty good for 57. You're a year too much. <laughs> <laughs> I almost my, my question is what goes with tongue <laughs> Brussels sprouts <laughs> <laughs> well better than lima beans let me tell you that yeah anyway before we talk about uh, you uh, leadership team uh, new, newly affirmed so there'll be 15 of us plus me 16 together on Tuesday night and you have a ministry opportunity you and Dave Smith kind of head up uh, the greeting schedule tell us about that yeah um as you realized, uh, ever since COVID, we usually had bulletins that were handed out by families right before you came in. Um, of course, COVID kind of shut everything down. Uh, we still had all the gentlemen at the doors greeting and helping people come into the church. Um, but we want to try to incorporate families again. So Dave and I have been heading, heading up this last year. And I have a feeling I'm probably going to be heading it up and Dave's going to retire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we want to try to incorporate families um, for greeting at the door. Um, so like if Barry Olson's family would like to greet at the door, um, we're still going to have some of the gentlemen do it, uh, but we would like to have families, all the families, except for maybe the Wiersma's family. I don't think there's <laughs> enough room in the vestibule for them, but... We would like to have families being able to do the greeting. I'm, I'm doing the scheduling along with Jennifer uh, this week. So if you would like to greet as a family at the front door, um, just let us know after church. So that way we can get you guys in the schedule. I think to start it off after January, February starts the new schedule. So I think Jennifer and I and Blake will probably start the year out. So let us know if you do want to uh, be on the schedule for greeting at the front door, or if you can't uh, do it this next year, I'll also send out a ma mass text to everyone. Um, so let, just let me know if you want to do it or if you don't. Thank you. 
Thank you. Awesome. So uh, individual men, individual ladies, and our families, please sign up, and we'd love to uh, have people get to know you and you as well with our guests that come. So thanks, AP, for doing that as well. Uh, Daughters in Christ, you meet next Sunday, not to this afternoon, so just alerting you to that as well, and next Sunday night, prayer service. And so just put that on your schedule if you could, and we'll kick off this new year. Fourth Sunday of every month, we uh, gather together. Let's read this together, shall we? To you, I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Our gaze is on Jesus Christ, right? Psalm 123. And after all of the sunrises that we saw, Carrie Forrest uh, put a, uh, a picture of orange. Uh, what a great sunrise it was a few days ago. But we continue to be in awe of the Creator. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky. Wow. It's been beautiful this week, Lord. And uh, with the fog frost on the trees... Fearfully and wonderfully done. Thank you, God. So those are good things. If you would, for a moment, take a, uh, take a stand, gr- turn around to each other and say, the peace of Christ be with you, and introduce yourself, would you? Amen. Right. As we gather together, stay standing so that we can sing, but I invite you to pray together with me. If you know the Lord's Prayer, uh, we'll use debts and debtors, and uh, if you don't know it, we certainly trust that the words from people around you would bring a blessing to you, but we offer them to our Lord together. So in unison, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Grace and peace to you from uh, God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's to him that we sing. Let's celebrate. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing.
seated. I almost want to give an applause to God for the fact that he sent his son and that we can lean into his arms constantly, no matter what it is that we're going through. He's holding us. He's encouraging us. He's speaking his love over us. Wow. So thanks be to God for the words of that song and thanks for the team as well. As we recognize his worthship, that's what we're doing. We're worshiping his worthship, his highness, his the king. We recognize, again, that we come with hearts that uh, are kind of like, what do you call that, dirty slush, how's that? As clean and as bright as the snow is, we also recognize that in our lives there's the dirty slush, and we don't want to keep it. We want to give it back, and so I'm inviting you to pray with me. These uh, slide screens will hold our prayer, so let's do that in unison, shall we? Lord God. Thank you for letting us come to be here with our brothers and sisters, our friends, our family in Christ. As you are everywhere, so you are here among us this morning. Your light and purity examine our hearts and our minds with great honesty. At first, the realization that there are no secrets frightens us. Slowly we realize that your Spirit's penetration of our conscience frees us from having to pretend that we are better than we are. Help us to continue in this loving openness as we admit our failures and take responsibility for the pain we have caused. Forgive us. May your grace persist in lighting our way and strengthening us against temptation. We pray this in our Savior's name, the one who died, so that we might know forgiveness and have life. Amen and amen. Thanks be to God. So as people who come and we confess, we keep short accounts with the Lord and we want to grab on to those words that are just a, a boon to our heart and to our spirit. And so let's together read 1 John 1, two verses together. Ready? But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Whew! As good news as the song was about leaning, so is this prayer in these verses from Scripture. Good news for each of us. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. So how should we live? 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, short one chapter, but hear this verse for you and me. Beloved, don't imitate that which is evil, but imitate that which is good. For he and she who does good is of God, and he who does evil has not seen God. You've tasted, you've seen, you've known this good God. Let us live for him this week in the power of the Holy Spirit and in accountability, community. Thanks be to him. Amen and amen. As we gather together for some things to pray into, you'll see things on the screen. Again, just highlighting uh, one or two of those. Josephine uh, has been uh, doing better, eating some more, uh, needs to continue to uh, eat and do that ensure and all of that. Uh, the family will meet this afternoon and will be making decisions about uh, next spot for uh, where Josephine uh, can go for good therapy. So we want to keep the family uh, in prayer there. And uh, Luetta, uh, her daughter, uh, is taking her uh, good care of her at her home, and we're just delighted to be able to know that that's uh, a desire that she had and a wish, and it's being lived into. So those are things that are there. Thinking of our country, our leaders, all of the political stuff that's going on, and uh, of course, tomorrow, uh, some of you, if you work for the uh, federal government, I think, or for the state at least, or banks, uh, they'll be closed. We want to pray into uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day tomorrow as well, so I want to weave that into the prayer. You have things. We have, uh, again, birthdays and uh, anniversaries, uh, family things that we get to celebrate. It's just good to be together. So open your heart. I'll give some space in the prayer for you to, uh, to have some silent time to hear from God or to speak to him as well. So let's pray together. So Lord, as we gather in this place, we think of the prelude, uh, the song about um, uh, this being your world. We think of some of the opening slides where uh, we again proclaim that you are the, the designer, the creator. And uh, as the created one, we recognize our humanity. And we get to join along with the angelic host in praising when that uh, wonderful invitation, all creatures of our God and King. That's us, Lord. And we want to be part of that choir, part of that, that wonderful noise, the joyful sound that all of creation makes in praising you. So thanks for this past week. Thanks for bringing us here to the start of a new week this day. Thanks that we get to celebrate the fact that today is, is again, almost a, a mini Easter. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. We proclaim that he rose on the first day. We proclaim that he lives today, that he's active, that he's worth worship. And uh, we just want to proclaim to a world all around us that we've gathered in this place because Jesus is important to us, because the Word is important to us. It invites us to worship. It commends us to worship. And uh, here we are as your people, young and old, celebrating you. Thanks for loving us. Thanks for caring for us. Thanks for uh, 75th birthdays and for 80th and for 94 years. And uh, thanks for letting this be a church of young and old. And how it is that we, we, we get along, how we love each other, how we take care of each other, how we laugh, how we cry. Again, mindful that uh, about a week ago we were in this place as we celebrated the life of Jerry Hagan and uh, recognizing that there are some folks today who are not here and find themselves in their home or in a hospital room. And uh, again, our hearts are with them. Our prayers are for them. We pray for the Wheel Dryer family and for all who uh, come alongside Luetta. 
Lord, there will be uh, changes. There's uh, things and schedules that need to be rearranged. And so we're asking that you would grant wisdom and patience and fullness. And for the, the plucker, the next generation, the plucker children and their spouses as they gather together for just uh, a discussion time and prayer this afternoon, let it be that they too would sense the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we recognize that we've been privileged to, uh, to witness about you, that we've been privileged to lift others up to pray uh, or in our prayers, bringing them to the throne room of grace. We also recognize that there are those that uh, we've intentionally ignored or uh, perhaps uh, we did not uh, do an act, we omitted to do something that you laid on our hearts. And while we've had our prayer of confession, God, we just want to come again this morning and just create space. You always fill it. You're always gracious. We ask that you would hear either our prayer of praise or our prayer of petition as we bring somebody whom we love before you now in this time of silence. And Lord, for the one that struggles this morning, perhaps with an uh, identity uh, issue, uh, somebody maybe with depression, uh, somebody with loneliness, we're asking that uh, you would allow them to be emboldened by being in this place, by sharing that uh, with somebody in confidence and safety. And uh, whoever it is that would hear those words would just immediately pray with that person and uh, be an encouragement to them over the course of this week. As we pray from uh, this house of worship, we recognize that we live in this state and in this country that tomorrow we'll celebrate this Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We give you thanks for him. We give you thanks that he was a pastor. We give you thanks that he uh, uh, wanted through peaceful means to show or to spotlight injustices and to bring, uh, yeah, to bring those things to an end. We think of his passionate sermons. We think of his lifestyle. We think of what it is that he tried to teach us in this country that it's a person's character and not the color of their skin that matters. And while he spoke into these things, God, we give you thanks that uh, he spoke those things that you, through your son, Jesus, while he was here on this earth, spoke about people being important and treating them all with worth, about people being created in your image, about people being valuable, we give you thanks that the teachings of Jesus ended up coming alongside uh, the, the, the Ten Commandments about not killing. Oh, we don't do that physically to another, but so many times our words and our thoughts have that effect on folks. And so again, as the world that seemed hated MLK, so it is that they hated Jesus Christ. But we, as your people, young and old, get to take the baton. We get to continually proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, that his way of life is the best way of life. And even though this world would make fun of us and or persecute, let it be that we would recognize that uh, the darkness cannot overcome the light. So King Jesus, continue to march forth. We are your hands and feet, and we ask again that you would uh, embolden us to share the good news. And all the while, we'll continue to stay leaning on your everlasting arms in Christ. Amen and amen. If you take your Bibles and turn with me to Acts, the 29th chapter... We're in this new series, and we're delighting in, uh, in the fact that we get to have God's Word. So Acts 29. Uh, 
All right, we have a problem. <laughs> Maybe we don't. Huh. There is no Acts 29, but could there be? Uh, you got it open, so let's look at Acts 28 for a moment. Look at the last two verses. He, Paul, lived there the two whole years at his own expense. He welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Say what? That's the end of the story? Like there's no chapter 29? There are some people who think that Luke, who wrote the gospel, book one, the gospel of Luke, who wrote book two, the book of Acts, 28 chapters, that he really was going to write a third book. We don't know that for sure, but there are many who have that kind of a thought that's out there. The fact that the chapter 28 kind of ends, when, when, when story after story comes through the first 28 chapters, for it to end like it is, you kind of go, that's a little bit of an anticlimax, isn't it? I'm going to share with you that it is my contention. So, Pastor Mark DeVord, it is my contention that if Chancellor Reformed Church, over the course of the 2023 year, lives out the truths that we find in these first 28 chapters, we'll be able to write, with God's grace, a 29th chapter. This, this, this book is all about, well, we'll talk about what all those things are, but I'm excited to be able to say we can live into, along with the church and the world, chapter 29. And uh, that chapter would end then by this line saying, and Jesus Christ returned and came back, and there was peace in the world, and there was newness in the world, and there was joy in the world, and sin was gone, and evil is gone, and illness is gone. Thanks be to God. Wow. So, there isn't a 29th, but I'll suggest to you, we'll be writing it as we continue to live. So, what are the 28 chapters that we do have? Uh, again, Wanted to put it all on one, but you'll see Luke, the author. Luke was a doctor. Luke was a Gentile, right? He was a non-Jew who came to know Jesus Christ in faith. And you'll see that the timeline, again, uh, two years, 14 years, 17, you add them all up, you get some 35 years of time that this book would contain. Generally, you can say it's in two parts, the foundation of the church and then what happens as the churches get founded, as they multiply throughout the world. You'll find the first oh, 10, 11, 12 chapters are pretty big about one person named Peter. And then all of a sudden we move into pretty big sections of passage on Paul. Interesting, Peter's a Jew, Paul's a Jew, but Paul has a specific call to the Gentile world. So the book of Acts is about a church, uh, the founding of the church, what it's supposed to do, what it's supposed to be, and how it's supposed to go and touch the whole world. So you'll find, as we're in the first five or six chapters, uh, the story is to the Jews, then it moves to the Gentiles who are around the area of Israel, and then it moves again into Cappadocia and Turkey and Ephesus and Corinth and all of these other wonderful places. And then at the very last, you'll see the words of Jesus in Acts. We'll read the text, but it says, and therefore stay in Jerusalem, but then go from there to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Acts 29 will be to the ends of the earth, which includes Chancellor, South Dakota. Thanks be to God. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask that you turn with me to Acts 1. We're going to read the first 11 verses, and uh, we're privileged to have the word of the Lord. Thanks be to him for it. Maybe right before we read, we can stop and say, 
what's your heading? If you've got a pew Bible, you're the same as I am. If you have a home Bible, uh, one that you brought from home, I'm just asking you, look at the title, right? The actual name of the book is Acts, A-C-T-S. That's it. So somebody who put the Bible together, in this particular case, a whole group of, uh, of, of scholars, the English Standard Version, but they wrote, which is not Scripture, of the apostles under there. Not bad. We who look at it go, oh yeah, this is a book about, oh yeah, Peter and Paul and the disciples and all of that, right? The disciples who were followers of Jesus while he was alive became the apostles, the ones who went out and spread the good news afterwards. But it could also be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit literally fills every page in these 28 chapters. You could also call it uh, the Acts of the church. How did the church in Derby? How did the church in Lystra in Turkey? How did the church in Jerusalem, how, how did they handle stuff? It could be called the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Holy Spirit, the Acts of the church, or the, the, the Acts, the recordings of all of the things that the church did. Not a problem. Recognize that the book is called Acts. And there will be times where we go through different chapters and we'll pick up on some of those acts and give it a heading. Now, the word of the Lord. In the first book, O Theophilus, stop there. The first book he's referring to, the Gospel of Luke. So we don't know who Theophilus is, probably some important person and probably somebody who, uh, who had some monies so that things could be written and researched and put together and bound up. In the first book, O Theophilus, I, Luke, have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they, the apostles, had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but... You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up. A cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Keep it open, would you? Let's look together to see what the Lord would lay on our hearts today. I think there are three key points, and uh, as we go there, God, we give you thanks for this word. We give you thanks for your Holy Spirit that continues to have these words be profitable for reproof, correction, for training unto righteousness, for uh, the goodness of our hearts, of our lives, and of our living. So take these words, we pray, and weld their truths to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In the first book, O Theophilus, I've dealt with all that Jesus' next word began that all that Jesus began to do, what was the task of Jesus while he was on this earth? Everything he began to do, everything he began to teach. I submit to you that this book, the book of Acts, is about helping us to understand and to live into the purpose of the church, the purpose that Jesus Christ had in mind. Purpose. What kinds of things did Jesus say? What kinds of things did he teach to these disciples? Somehow, 
the Lord's ministry, as it was in those days, should be continued in our days. The first purpose of the book of Acts is to show us that the Lord's ministry needs to be continued, should be completed. So, before Jesus went to heaven, right? <laughs> Twice it's referred to in these 11 verses. Before he left, before he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, we know that part of the Apostles' Creed. Before he left, he encouraged his disciples, he taught his disciples, he gave them mandates. Mandates. What's the biggest mandate? You find it in the book of Matthew, you find it in the gospel of Mark, you find it in the gospel of Luke, you find it in the gospel of John, and you find it here in Acts, the first chapter, verse 8. The mandate, fairly clear, perhaps Matthew is the most familiar one, right? Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded you. Hmm. So Jesus began with his disciples, and he taught them, he mentored them, he raised them up so that they would be um, uh, wise in both knowledge and in wisdom, in passion. They would catch the mission and the vision that Jesus had, and they would go and proclaim it. I love the word go. If you're a guest with us, last week I told our people that we were in April of this year going to celebrate 120 years. This particular building was built in 1964. The uh, stained glass windows, again, thank you, Somerville family, but uh, added and, and just beautified this place. Some renovations, thank you, wheel dryer family to the front, uh, all of that kind of stuff. And it's a nice building. It's it's a nice building. But nowhere did Jesus ever say to the church, build nice buildings so that people who don't know me will be so enamored by those buildings that they'll come. Doesn't happen. In this particular building here and in the rooms that we have, we do instruction, Sunday school, adults, kids, happens right after the service. We do fellowship, happens right after this service, a variety of cookies. Thank you, Doug and Jolene and uh, the uh, Somerville family for supplying that for us. And we do e evangelism and mission. We tell people about Christ, but we understand that we need to go. People don't just come in. They need to be in connection with us. I could pick on all kinds of Fisher people, but I'm going to pick on Marty Wessels. I love picking on people. Thank you, Marty. So Marty's a fisherman. It's, you know, he likes to do it maybe once every two months or three months or something like that. But when he goes fishing, can you imagine um, if he goes fishing, let's say he goes to the Missouri River and he uh, catches 10 fish and he puts them all on a stringer. And uh, he puts them next to his boat. Then he brings his boat in into the boat launch, puts it on his trailer and drives all the way home, but leaves the stringer with all of the fish there at the river. So many times that's the word picture for you and I, for the church, when it is that we think that we need to go and say to people, uh, do you know Jesus? Uh, is there any reason why you shouldn't accept receiving the gift of grace that God provides? All of that is wonderful, but if that's all we do, ask somebody to come to faith, and let's say that the Holy Spirit works and that person comes to faith, but we don't do anything with that person. It's like leaving a string of fish at the river. Jesus says, I want you to go, I want you to, to fish, but I also want you to bring the fish in. I want you to mentor them. I want you to disciple them. I want you to teach them everything that I've commanded you, the things that you know. It's not osmosis. It doesn't just happen when you say, I believe in Jesus. And all of a sudden, oh, I just said those words. And now, oh, I know that there are 66 books in the Bible. There are 50 chapters in the book of Genesis. Oh, 40 in the book of Exodus. Oh, I know the whole story of creation and, and the fall and, and redemption and, and his coming. You don't know those things automatically. So the purpose of the book of Acts is to show us how it is that people went fishing and what they did with those fish. Fishing for people. 
how they came to know Christ. And then by the time you get to the end of chapter 2, we're going to look at how did the church do this with people as they came to faith? Look at verses 42 and 47. We'll be there in a few weeks. So purpose. The purpose of the church is to do what Jesus began. Instruction. Asking for people to commit their hearts to him. To live in the power of the Spirit? We'll see. The second thing that we see just coming through in in bold letters in this first chapter is the person of Jesus. Not only the purpose, but the person of Jesus. As you look, you see sprinkled throughout how it is that he came, what it is that he did while I was here, how it is that he suffered. You get that phrase in there? He suffered? Ultimately, he ended up dying on the cross, paying the price for people's sins, but he didn't stay dead, right? Here's the good news. <laughs> he, he rose again. He showed himself. He stayed around for 40 more days. And what did he do in that time? Play tiddlywinks? No, he continued to bring his disciples and his followers around him, and he continued to speak truth into their lives, continued to speak guidelines for them to live in the sense that he knew he was going to leave the person of Jesus. I love how it is that Luke puts this at the beginning and at the end. (laughs) Jesus, Jesus. He's alive. Jesus is active. It's not that uh, that was a storybook that closed in 33 AD. No. Jesus is still king and head of the church, this church, his church. And we're delighted by how it is that we get to speak of him, Jesus. I'm wondering if the task of the church, if the purpose is to continually uh, teach and model and, and, and speak of Jesus, do people see Jesus in us individually? Do people see Jesus in us collectively? Are we Jesus followers? When people come in, so as, as families greet or as individuals greet at the front door, as they come in here, they've been prayed for, right? At 9 o'clock, you can come and you can pray for the service like we do. Uh, spend time on Saturday night praying into Sunday. But let it be that as people would come, do they, they smell the aroma of Jesus Christ? Do they know that Christ is, is very real, that he's loved, that he loves the person of Jesus. The person of Jesus who gives us the purpose of Jesus and for the church. Uh, Kathy and I have the privilege in a few weeks of flying to Taiwan. It's been four years since we've been there, and I'll say to you right now, as we come back, we're going to start a Sunday school class, adult class, and it's called Go Fish. And it's all about how it is that we want to take the great, commission, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, live it into our own lives, and make sure that it's permeable throughout the whole of our congregation. Go fish. This past Wednesday night, we started a new adult elective class called Purposeful Living. As we understand how it is that we are to be evangelists and to be instructors and mentors as well as students of the Word, we're saying, how do we live this out? And based on on those things of Scripture, the different Bible verses are coming together, how it is that God's wired us, be it spiritual gifts, be it our aptitudes, be it our passion, our, our, our heart's desire, we put those things together and we create this personal mission statement, each of us gets to live into this with purpose, with desire, with with joy, all because it's centered around the person of Jesus. I love it. Third task, third major piece. We see the purpose of the church, we see the person of Jesus, we see the power that's ours, right? The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, This is the person of whom Jesus says, it's better for you that I, one individual here, fully God, in the flesh, that I go because the Spirit will come and he'll be able to be everywhere in the world. 
in each of you. The Spirit will come and do His work within you, allowing you the privilege of saying yes to Jesus, and the Spirit of God will come upon us as a church and help to aid us in doing ministry. The power, the one who helps the church be the church, the one who gives us the power to pray, the one who gives us the empowerment to do what Jesus' purpose is, to share the good news, to teach, Sunday school, instruct, to, to, to be together, to have fellowship, and to recognize that we exist for a bigger reason than just for our happiness. In fact, that's really low on the list, isn't it? The church is the only organism that exists for the people who aren't part of it yet. Wow. Wow. We've seen some growth over this past year. We don't belittle it in any way. We're grateful to God for, for people. But lo and behold, could it be that this year there would be more folks who've never known Christ who come to saving faith in Him? Could it be that we grow with folks who are new believers? My prayer, along with yours, is what I want to work toward. We'll continually care and love up on each other, right? We're internally mindful. We love you. You love us. But we're going to start turning the ship around to say inwardly mindful, but outwardly focused. What that looks like, I don't know. It's why we're having a leadership team meeting. It's why we're going to spend some time as elders and deacons this Tuesday night in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 19 through 20. We're going to wrestle with, God, what do you want to do? More than we can think of or imagine. What's that even look like? Lead us. Put that passion in our hearts. Help us to have the resources to carry it out. So before I finish, I want to ask these questions. The first, I'm going to ask you to evaluate over the course of this week, what do you believe about Jesus? Do you believe the things that are written about him in this first part of the chapter? Number two, I'm going to ask you, how are you doing in fulfilling the Lord's purpose that he has for you individually and that he has for us collectively. Perhaps you could make that part of your prayer time over the course of this week, so that every week as we gather together, we get this sense that God's on the move. He's doing something. He's, he, he's causing me to wrestle and to rejoice, and, oh, and I sense it in you, and slowly but surely, it, it's, it's this fire that takes place. And the third question is, are you walking in the Spirit? <laughs> Got to wait for the Holy Spirit. Do we know what that looks like? That'll be a variety of sermons over the course of this year. Relying and growing in the Holy Spirit. So I'm pretty excited. It's going to be a good series. I'm excited because Chancellor Reformed Church at 120 years ago, somebody lit a fire. And... We give God thanks that for those 120 years, we were able to come alongside other churches. Churches in Sioux Falls, we helped to start. We came along with finances. We started doing vacation Bible school. We started reaching out to others. We're in partnership together with the Lenox Area Ministerial Association. We're making connections now with the Parker Ministerial Association. We're doing things called Love in the Name of Christ, getting partner churches to work together. And so now what happens is it's not just one little flame, the church is starting to blaze. It's catching on. And the joy is that as long as the Lord tarries and we get to be part of Acts 29, now what we get to do is to pass it on. So that's the title I'm going to give our series. Lit, Blazing, and Passing It On. Whew. Thanks be to God. I like that picture. I didn't take it, but I like it because that looked like the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> You'll see that again. All right, kids, I see it's 1031. What does that mean? Cheryl McNelly, are you ready to be the Pied Piper and lead your class on? Absolutely. 
If you're a teacher or a child, we're going to bless you as you go. Thanks for uh, doing the instruction piece. Oh, please give him his hat. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> And if you're a guest with us, we have uh, Sunday school for kids all the way from 3 to 102. Those of you that are in my class, we're not going to meet today because we have all of these guests and I want to eat some of uh, uh, the stories that people are going to tell about Merlin and others, and so that'll be good. So Let's pray. God, we give you thanks again for how it is that you're on the move. We give you thanks that Dr. Luke tells us that Jesus Christ is at the center alongside the other person of that trinity, God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And so help us as we, we, we wade through these weeks. Empower us to have this passion to know who Jesus is and to believe in all that he has said and done. To ask for the fullness of the Holy Spirit more and more and to be a church that uh, not just is on fire, but continues to, uh, to spread that, to pass it on. So, for the gift of hearing the call of the kingdom, <laughs> as we sing this song, it's Jesus inviting us through the power of the Holy Spirit to spread the good news. So we sing this as a closing prayer of, of, of intention. And would you receive glory and honor through it all in Christ? Amen. Stand, would you, and sing with the team. I make no bones about it. Brooks and I standing here singing together, young and old, what a joy. Next generations. But we are a church that has a great commitment to do the Great Commission, to love God and to live into the Great Commandment. 
join us on this journey. We need each other because there's a whole world that needs to know Christ. Brothers and sisters, may it be that the love of God our Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. You're dismissed. They're going to sing, I think, one more time. Hear the call of the kingdom to reach out to the lost with the Father's compassion. We will.